वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स नाउ वी आर ऑन ए एन अदर शॉर्ट नोट फ्रॉम द रीजन ऑफ द शोल्डर जॉइंट एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एज द रोटेटर कफ और मस्क्यूलो टेंडिनस कफ नाउ द मसल्स व्हिच आर अटैच ऑन टू द अपर एंड ऑफ द ह्यूमरस ओके दे सराउंड द शोल्डर जॉइंट देयर मसल एज वेल एज टेंडन टेंडन्स बिकम फ्लैटन दे फ्यूज विद द कैप्सूल ऑफ द शोल्डर जॉइंट ऑन एंटीरियर सुपीरियर एंड पोस्टियर एस्पेक्ट एक्सेप्ट द इन्फीरियर एस्पेक्ट एंड दे फॉर्म ए स्ट्रक्चर समथिंग लाइक दैट ऑफ ए कफ दैट्स वाई दिस स्ट्रक्चर्स विच आर अटैच ऑन टू द अपर एंड ऑफ द ह्यूमरस दे फॉर्म ए रोटेटर कफ और द मस्क्यूलो टेंडिनस कफ okay and this rotator cuff is formed by the four flattened tendons of muscle and as i said they blend with the capsule of the shoulder joint okay and by this way they provide the stability to the shoulder joints muscles they are supraspinatus infraspinatus okay and the teres minor supraspinatus is on to the superior aspect of the shoulder joint okay capsule of the shoulder joint infra spinatus and teres minor they are on the posterior aspect and the subscapularis muscle it blends the art capsule of the shoulder joint from anterior aspect so they surround the anterior superior and the posterior aspect of the shoulder joint it will be better that if we will learn about the origin and insertion of these muscles very quickly so that we will understand this rotator cuff or the musculo tendinous cuff in a better way so let's come first to the supra spinatus muscle okay in this rough diagram i have shown you the scapula from back and i have cut this spine of the scapula that means acromion process is not there so that the deeper structures are not hidden now this is the supra spinatus fossa from posterior aspect of the scapula and this is the humerus as seen from the posterior aspect here you can see that the top of this greater tubercle is seen okay where three facets are seen on the top of greater for the insertion of the supra spinatus infra spinatus and teres minor so we will see the attachment of the three muscles which takes origin from the dorsal aspect of the scapula let us come to the supra spinatus it takes origin from the medial two third this is the medial side midline is here so this is the medial border so this supra spinatus takes origin from the medial two third of the supra spinatus fossa of the scapula and this muscle is a bipinnate muscle okay Now, there are two heads of this muscle pinnas and then this muscle goes on to the top of the uh, shoulder joint okay from the uh, upper aspect of the shoulder joint or top and ultimately this become tendinous okay a flattened tendon is formed here which blends with the capsule and then it goes and gets attached on to that of the top uh, facet on to that of the greater tubercle of the humerus okay and here and the top face it okay so this is the supra spinatus spinatus muscle it's uh, it is supplied by the supra scapular nerve which comes through this notch and then it goes into the supra spinatus and then will go to the so this is the supra scapular nerve whose root value is c5 and c6 okay now this muscle as it blends with that of the capsule it is the main function of it is to provide the stability and this is the also the function i mean to say muscle which initiates the uh, action of the abduction okay so its contraction will lead to the abduction of the humerus or the arm at the shoulder joint let us quickly come to the next muscle that is the infra spinatus and infra spinatus is a multipinnate because there are mm, multiple septas are attached to, on to the um, this aspect of the scapula and from there the muscles they take origin multipinnate muscle takes origin this 
tendon will also become flattened and this will get attachment onto the intermediate area of the greater tubercle on superior surface of the greater hmm, tubercle. So this is the infraspinatus muscle. Now supplies as said is the same suprascapular nerve. Root value is C5 and C6. Along with the little abduction, this also provides the stability to the shoulder joint by forming the rotator cuff. Now the third muscle which is attached here is the teres minor muscle, okay? And teres minor fibers, they arise from the lateral border of the scapula upper two third and these fibers will also become flattened, I mean see the tendon and then it is attached onto the lowest part of the greater tubercle on the top, superior surface of the grade. So three muscles they are present, supraspinatus on the top, okay, from the superior aspect which forms a relation here, superior relation to the shoulder joint, blends with the capsule here of the shoulder joint, then infraspinatus and teres minor. Let us come to the fourth muscle which forms the rotator cuff and that is the subscapularis. Again this muscle is and uh, multi-pinnate muscle because multiple septa they are attached onto the costal surface of the scapula. This is the medial border of the scapula is here and this is the costal surface from where the subscapularis muscle, a thick muscle, okay, a strong muscle. It takes multi-pinnate, powerful muscle and it goes and gets attached onto the lesser tubercle of the humerus. This is the bicipital group. This was greater on the top of which here, which was the attachment of supraspinatus. This is the subscapularis, which is attached here. If we see the subscapularis muscle, as I said that it is on the ventral aspect of the scapula. Now this is also a multi-pinnate muscle and powerful muscle and this muscle is supplied by upper and lower subscapularis branch from the radial nerve upper and lower subscapularis this contraction will lead to the medial rotation of the humerus on the shoulder joint so it is a powerful medial rotator muscle and adductor too okay so these are the four muscles which are going to form the uh, I mean say rotator cuff okay they are going to form let us see once you have seen the origin insertion and now supply of these muscles and how they are attached hmm, are inserted by forming a flattened tendon now we see that this uh, uh, in this diagram we will see that uh, how they will form flattened tendon and how these flattened tendons of these four muscles they will attach to that of the articular capsule of the shoulder joint. This is the anterior aspect, okay, here, anterior aspect, okay. And this is the posterior aspect of the shoulder joint. This inside here, this is the glenite cavity, just I represented here. This is the floor of the glenite cavity, right? And capsule is cut all around, okay, so that we are seeing the gland, not the head of the humerus, but the glenite cavity. Floor of the glenite cavity is seen here, right? So we are seeing the shoulder joint, okay, by cutting this capsule and from the lateral aspect of the shoulder, head of the humerus, which is on medial height, is not there, okay? And then what you will see that this is the articular capsule and I will represent it with the green color of the articular capsule. Here is the articular capsule of the shoulder joint which is cut hmm, around the circumference here. So this is the articular capsule which becomes discontinuous deep to the uh, muscle called as the subscapularis. So this is the tendon which for the tendon I will take an another color and this is the blue color. So this is the flattened tendon of the subscapularis muscle which lies on the anterior side of the scapula because it crosses the scapula, I mean say joint, shoulder joint from, see this in this diagram we have seen. So subscapularis crossing the shoulder joint from its anterior aspect to go to the lesser tubercle. Okay. So this is the muscle called as the sub I mean it's a flattened tendon of the muscle subscapularis scapularis. So this is on anterior side. 
Now then, this is the flattened tendon of the supraspinatus, attached, which form the mm, relation in the top of the shoulder joint. So this is superior relation. So this muscle tendon is the supra spinatus okay supra and then just hmm, posto inferior to this okay in this posterior aspect and hmm, this is the infra spinatus and this is the teres minor so this is infra spinatus okay and this is the teres minor all these are the flattened and muscle belly has ended and these are the flattened. So I had shown you that this supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor from top to the posterior aspect. Okay, this tendon become flattened tendons and this flattened tendon they will just form a communication with each other. Okay, so this is the communication between this tendon with each other, right? They are joined with each other by sending the fibrous expansion here, say for example, and thus it forms a cuff here on anterior aspect, superior aspect, and the posterior aspect of the shoulder joint, except the inferior aspect where only capsule is free, no muscle, no support on the inferior aspect is there. Not only that, these four tendons, they will join with each other also. They will also fuse. They will fuse here. I am just drawing the fusion of this under surface of this flattened tendon with that of the capsule, articular capsule. That means they are supporting the articular capsule by fusing with that. So a very strong layer is formed. Tendinous layer is formed, flattened tendinous layer is formed, which is fusing with the capsule of the shoulder joint on its anterior aspect, on superior aspect, and on its posterior aspect. As I said that these muscles, they are just the muscles which rotate the head, I mean say rotate the upper end of the humerus, say for subscapularis was medially rotating, supraspinatus was initiating the abduction, infraspinatus and teres minor, they were fixing, okay, they were lateral rotating the, huh, the humerus. So these muscles, they are just forming a functional cuff around the shoulder joint okay and they are capable to rotate the shoulder joint that's why this cuff is called as the rotator cuff this is called as the rotator cuff right so you understood the anatomy of the rotator cuff now what is the applied importance of this rotator cuff let us see this now since they are fusing with the shoulder joint from anterior aspect, superior aspect as well as that of the posterior aspect, they are protecting the shoulder joint hmm, from all the aspect. Okay, they are protecting the shoulder joint from all the aspect. Now except that of the inferior aspect. aspect. So this the rotator cuff or this flattened tendon by fusing with the articular capsule they provide the stability to the shoulder joint so the shoulder joint cannot be dislocated upward backward and forward but it can be dislocated from on the inferiorly because there is no support and as we have learned in the last video also dislocation of the shoulder joint which is very common in the inferior direction is responsible for the injury to the axillary now which leads to the paralysis of the deltoid muscle okay thank you very much for watching this video